Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. Detroit police taking over towing in the city, a plan not everyone thinks is a great idea. Talks break down to end the work stoppage impacting road work across Metro Detroit, but the governor is now considering to get construction started back up again. But we're going to begin with the Friday storm threat. Glad you're with us for Local 4 News at 11. Parts of Metro Detroit hit with storms earlier tonight, while the rest of us dealing with a very warm and kind of humid conditions. So let's get right over to Ben. He's tracking the severe weather threat over the next 24 hours here, Ben. Yeah, Kim and Devin, that is one of two weather headaches that we're going to have to deal with tomorrow. The storm threat is for pretty much all of us. The good news is it's in a pretty narrow window between about 2 and 4, 2 and 5 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. And we'll look at the timing on that coming up. The other thing we've got to be concerned about is the wind, and this is not going to be in a narrow window. This is going to be all day tomorrow. We'll start at 8 o'clock, and you can see the wind gust already 20 to 25 miles an hour stepping out the door, and those numbers only go up. They'll be topping 40 miles an hour at times. That's at the surface. There, of course, will be faster winds above that, so even just garden variety showers will be uh, able to pull down some a faster wind gust as we get into the afternoon, so we'll have to watch out for that. Starting out tomorrow temperature wise we'll see the sunshine numbers will be in the low 70s but it is going to be a muggy start some of us get to the 80s but everybody gets cool this weekend we'll look at that and of course more in the storm threat coming up guys city of detroit is back in business at least in the towing business unexpectedly tonight the police commission voted to give all towing rights within city limits to Detroit police, a surprising move that sends tow truck companies and operators now scrambling because they, of course, stand to lose a lot of money. Germont Terry uh, live at one soon to be city impound lot on the uh, east side with both sides of the story. Fascinating, Germont. It is, Devin. Now, the city um, property here along Mount Elliott is going to be one of four new impound lots. If you get your uh, vehicle towed, you're going to have to come to one of these locations. Now, after f many decades of letting the private tow companies handle all the towing issues within the city, DPD wants in on the action and the money that comes with it. If your car gets towed in Detroit, you will now need to call Detroit police to get it back. DPD is stepping back into the towing business and putting the brakes on private tow owners. It's only a matter of time that eventually, based on what they were saying in the meeting, that we'll probably end up closing our doors. The guys at Detroit Auto Rescue on Joy Road have operated solely in the city since 1992. And most of the people I employ, they're, they are residents of Detroit. But Thursday, the police commission voted to let DPD take over towing. It left of 22 private companies with city licenses confused. We we're blindsided today when we came to this meeting. I had no clue that the city was going to get involved in the towing business. It has been shown to be a best practice. Chief James Craig says six tow trucks are already purchased and DPD plans to hire just over a dozen workers. Is that good for the city? Yes, it is. But the Detroit Authorized Towing Association insisting it's the opposite for the more than 200 workers. This is detrimental to our business and detrimental to Detroit business owners. The city will operate four new impound lots. Drivers will now pay the city directly to get their vehicles, generating huge revenue. So how much are we talking? There has to be some projected numbers that you guys have examined. If you already purchased the trucks, that would say well, overall we would generate, we expect in this in the first you, six months. I'm telling you that uh, we have not projected in that way. He has to have some kind of recollection of what it's going to generate because other than that, he wouldn't yes. be getting the business. And while the decision seems like a quick one, Chief Craig insisting that they started looking into this back in 2017 and the decision was just made today. Reporting live, I'm Jermont Terry, Local 4. Well, Jermont, if the city purchased six tow trucks, um, that is not enough to cover all of Detroit, right? <laughs> You're exactly right, Devin. Right now, the chief projects that they're going to handle about 20% of their, of their towing right now, and then they're going to pick and choose of those 22 companies which, one, which ones will get the overflow. And that's still unclear how that's going to work. So yeah. the towing companies in the city, along with the DPD, they're going to meet next week to try to figure out how much of this money of the pie they will truly still get. Yeah. All right, Jermont. New tonight, Gross Point Woods Police released a sketch of the man they say tried to abduct a child. It happened last night around 8 in the area of Martyr and Roslyn Roads. Investigators say the 13-year-old boy was riding his bicycle when this man got out of a black Cadillac Escalade and tried to grab him. The boy was able to get away and make it home safely. 
If you have any information, contact police. State of Michigan could soon turn the, to the National Guard to get construction projects going again amid a work stoppage. Today, a new round of negotiations broke down with union operators leaving the bargaining table, saying officials reneged on a handshake deal. In response, Governor Snyder is threatening to put National Guard heavy equipment operators behind the wheel to get the construction projects going again. The lockout has shut down or partially impacted more than 150 road projects in southeast Michigan. Two people questioned tonight after an off-duty Detroit officer fires a shot, apparently in fear of his life. Happened this afternoon in the area of Seven Mile Road and Pontchartrain on Detroit's west side. Two vehicles were merging in a construction zone when the off-duty officer says he thought he saw a weapon in the other driver's car, feared for his life, and fired a shot striking the vehicle. That driver was later tracked down by police. He did admit to having a gun, but it was in the trunk locked in a box. He and his passenger were detained for question. Couple suspected of carjacking an 88 year old woman in Livonia in a Walmart parking lot were in court today. Jason Molinas and Jessica St. Clair facing several charges, including carjacking and robbery. Yesterday, we brought you the story of Gloria Kevlin. She was walking to get a shopping cart when police said the couple grabbed her purse and stole her car. And you can see the marks they left on her. A judge ordered a $2 million bond for each of them. They'll be back in court next week. It is recognized as one of the most well-respected and well-run nonprofits in the city. But the services that Alternatives for Girls provides to at-risk girls and their babies is in danger of being impacted if two federal grants don't come through. Mara McDonald is live on Detroit's West Side tonight. Uh, so Mara, how much grant money are we exactly talking about here? Kimberly, we're talking about a lot. We're talking about $400,000. And if that money doesn't come through, well, that changes things here. But one of the biggest problems is the not knowing. They're in limbo. For more than 30 years, Alternatives for Girls has been a safe haven for girls with nowhere else to go. They help those on the streets and those who are at risk. A is for achievement. A is for appreciation. Consistently recognized as an outstanding nonprofit, it still has to compete for federal grant monies. By the end of this month, the current grant runs out, and they're waiting to see whether they're going to be selected for two new grants totaling $400,000. I find myself waking up in the middle of the night and, you know, leaning over to the cell phone. To see if an email on their grant application has come through, there are three possibilities here. AFG gets all the grant monies, they get partial monies, or they get none. Anything is possible, and they've got plans in place for all three. Even if we were to face a funding crisis, we are not going to put the girls and young women we serve into a crisis in their lives. Lack of funding will likely mean a lack of beds in their shelter and a lack of staff. They currently have 19 young women and their 12 children. Nobody would be turned out. I want them to know that Alternatives for Girls has their back. But transitioning them to other facilities is a reality. If we get funded with both of the grants that we have recommended, we will cry here. Uh, we won't get home. We'll all be crying here. Happy cry. Happy cry. Happy cry. Tired cry. Right now, everybody here is just on tenterhooks. They don't know when the decision is going to come in. Originally, they were told maybe they would know in August. Now we're closing in on the end of September. Um, they have qualified for these grants for the last 20 years, but that is no guarantee that they qualify this time around. We're live on Detroit's West Side. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. Such an important um, agency to our community here. We'll see what happens, Mara. Thanks. Funeral arrangements have been made for the founder and longtime artistic director of the Detroit Opera Theater, David DiChiara. Public visitation is going to be held tomorrow at where else? The Detroit Opera House beginning at 11 a.m. A funeral service will take place at 1 p.m. DeKiera passed away earlier this week at the age of 83 following his battle with pancreatic cancer. We're going to stream tomorrow's service for you. It'll be on our website at clickondetroit.com. Your Alexa is about to get smarter. You just woke up. And that's what I was right, trying to do. Saying, I know. <laughs> New tonight, what Amazon just revealed. It's going to give Alexa a little more to do around the house. We'll have that coming up. And a woman seen clinging onto the hood of a moving car in an act of road rage. What happened moments before the woman was run over? Also, local first responders returning home after helping families in the Carolinas. What it was like working in 10 feet of water in just a minute. 